One day, a small child came from school and gave a little paper to her mother and told her mother that the teacher gave him the paper to give it to the mother and said that it is only the mother that can read the content of what is written in it. What does it say? The young boy asked. Her eyes swelled with tears as she read the letter out loud to the child. Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him and doesn't have good enough teachers to train him. Please, teach him yourself. Hold that thought because I'll finish with that story. Now, it is a serious obligation and opportunity for parents to give their children the instructions and the correction that is necessary as part of the Christian upbringing. Parents are to be the example of Christian life and conduct, caring for their children's spiritual salvation and development more or rather than their own jobs or social status. It is the responsibility of parents to raise their children in the way that prepares them to fulfill God's purpose for their lives. It is the family, not the church, the school, or any other institution that is responsible for training, especially the biblical and spiritual training of their children. The church and even the school can only assist in parental training. The fundamental of Christian parental care is this. The heart of the earthly parent must be turned towards the heart of the child in order to turn the heart of the child to the heart of God. Let's move into my case study today. Today we had a reading from 1 Samuel chapter 1. And 1 Samuel chapter 1 is a wonderful narrative of the Old Testament literature. It is about a couple. A Kana is the man and Hannah, of whom you know, uh, is the woman. Elkanah had two wives, I'm starting from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 1 now. He had two wives. The other wife was fruitful. She had children. But the other one was barren. And you know her as Hannah. She was barren. She was mocked. This, um, her, her co-wife will mock her. But she did three things. She prayed. She made a vow. And she gave thanks. Hannah prayed in spite of her anguish. She prayed because she was deeply distressed. She prayed for the Lord. In that prayer, she wept bitterly. And it reminds me of the story in Isaiah chapter 38, when Hezekiah was sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah came in and said, Set your house in order, for you will die and not leave. Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and he prayed. The Bible says he wept bitterly. And before the prophet would go out of the house, the word of the Lord came back to him. Go back and tell Hezekiah that he's been given 15 years of his life. Hannah prayed in spite of her anguish. What do you do when you're in trouble? What do you do when you are in crisis? Do you kick against everything? Or do you pray? Because when you pray, God will answer you. If you have any challenge, any trouble, any crisis, you can't do anything about it, first point of call, get on your knees and pray. Hannah prayed in spite of her anxiety, of her vexation. She prayed from her displeasure and her aggravation. Now, in that prayer, she made a vow. 
She made a vow and said to God, well, if you give me a child, I will give him back to you. Have you ever gotten to the stage where you are praying for God to do something for you? And even before the answer comes, you are giving an offering or you are offering back to God. Have you gotten to that stage? Because when you do that, then your prayer will be answered speedily. Sometimes when we pray, we have to cut a deal with God. And that's what Anna did. She got to the stage as a mother where she cut a deal with God. So, well, if you do this for me, I will do that for you. So remember that. And whenever you're praying for anything, whether it's a child, it's a job, uh, it's, it's a marriage, a life partner, it's for finances, whatever. Make a vow and say to God, if you do this, I will do that for you. And we see in the example of Hannah that it did happen. Third, she gave thanks. And that's the reading we have today. So her husband was going to the temple to worship and wanted to go with Hannah. And she said, oh, no, 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 wait, um, I need to win the child first. So wait, I will win the child, and after she, his win, I'll bring him up to the temple. After that, Hannah takes the child to the temple and offer the child for the service of God. How many of you can do that? She offer a child she'd been waiting for, only God knows how long. Offer this child to God. It was in that temple, under the leadership of Eli, the priest, that the little boy, Samuel, had his own calling and began to fulfill his own destiny. Samuel is the greatest figure in the history of the Jewish people and the children of Israelite. He was a judge, he was a prophet, and he was a priest. Her mother had to give him back to God. So, what about some practical steps that I talked about? Well, in raising of your children, you are to sh show no favoritism. If you have more than one child, none whatsoever, no favoritism. You should encourage as well as correct. You need to dedicate your children to God and dedicate yourself in raising them at the very beginning of their lives. You need to teach your children. Teach them in all they do to honor God and to turn away from anything that might offend God and to do what is right in God's standard and hate what defies God and destroys people. Protect your children from ungodly influences by being aware of certain methods that attempt to destroy them spiritually through worldly attractions. In protecting your children, you need to be at least 10 miles or 100 steps ahead of them. That means you need to work on yourself. So my children now who are 21 years old, they still think I look, I watch over their shoulders because I've started the bedrock when they were younger. I will put a software on your phone, you won't know it. It will just be useless. <laughs> they are not going to like it. That's none of your business. You're there to protect them and not for them to like you. Hello? So please, protect these children from these dangers. They are very, very prevalent and they prey on them. All sorts go through those strings. So please protect these children. And finally, lead your children early in life to personally accept Christ and entrust themselves to him. Instruct your children daily in God's word, both in conversation and in private prayer or family prayer with God's word. Now, mothers in our society today have far more opportunities than Samuel's mother to influence their children in a positive way. Her offering of Samuel to be used by God is an inspiration for many mothers. 
who struggle to influence and encourage and inspire their children to live godly lives. Back to my story. One day, a small child by name Thomas Edison came home, gave his mother a slip of paper, a letter, and said that the teacher gave me this to give to you and said only you can read it. The woman opened the letter and said this. She was crying as she read it. Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him. And don't have good enough teachers to train him. Please, teach him yourself. Many years later, after Thomas Edison, mother has died. And he himself has become the greatest of inventors of the century. He was going through his closet and found that letter that his old teacher has written to his mother. He opened it. And the message written in the letter was this. Your son is mentally deficient. We cannot let him attend our school anymore. He is expelled. Now, Edith Edison, Thomas Edison became so emotional reading it. And he wrote this in his diary. Thomas A. Edison was mentally deficient child whose mother turned him into the genius of a century. Now you're sitting here today under this light because of the action of that mother. This person in question is the person that invented our light bulbs. All right? That is the power of the mother's influence. How are you able to turn negative things that flies all around into your children, especially when they come from school. You're going to have to work a lot to jettison a lot of the things that are going through their head. Turn them to positive. Your son is mentally deficient. We cannot allow him to attend our school anymore. He is a spelt. This was the message that the mother turned into. Your son is a genius. This school doesn't have good enough to train good enough teachers to train him. Please. Teaching yourself. <laughs> that is the power of a mother's influence. As you raise your children. Never forget this. If you want a copy of the sermon, please ask my request. And I'll give it to you. But when you guide your children, encourage them, protect them, lead them, teach them, then they can grow. And the sky will be the limit. Such is the power of a mother's influence. Amen. Amen. Amen.